In this video, we are going to talk about the two strikers who are linked with Kaiser Chiefs. We're also going to talk about the potential move of Samge Lozwane away from Kaiser Chiefs. We're also going to talk about the saddening state about Kaiser Chiefs that you cannot believe. We're also going to finally reflect on the season because the nightmare is over. We hope we wake up from this nightmare next season. Hello and welcome to Coast Nation Fan TV. I am Pelo. I am your host and this... This is where fans meet and talk about Kaiser Chiefs. Amakusi Football Club, starting with Andy Boyeli, a 22-year-old from the Democratic Republic of Congo, who's currently playing for Power Dynamos in Zambia, who are third on the look. This man, or this young man, has scored 17 goals so far this season, and Kaiser Chiefs are said to be leading in terms of the race to sign the player. Leading who? Leading Mamelodi Sundowns and Orlando Pirates, who according to, let me read his name properly, Eric Dakichima, who's a journalist, who's saying that Kaiser Chiefs right now were not like ahead Pirates or ahead uh, in signing this player or wanting to sign this player, but now Kaiser Chiefs have overtaken them. I'm guessing because the Orlando Pirates currently, they are also looking to sign Urainas, and also they were leading the race at the time when Umabasa was not at the best level that he's in right now. So since they want to rain us as well and they have their foreign sports almost full, or full if not almost full, and that means they're fine. They will not be going out to sign someone outside of South Africa while they have a striker who's scoring goals. You look at Mamelo de Sundowns as well, their situation with foreign sports, they are not... In Gantikeza Chiefs, they are going to be releasing Hugo Gonzalez, which opens the space. That means they can go out and get that player. We move on to the second striker, which is Ashley Cupido. We talked about this guy last week on the live stream. And then he scored this weekend against Kaiser Chiefs. I'm not saying now he's prolific because he scored against Chiefs. But so far this season, he scored seven goals for Cape Town Spurs and also had one assist. That is not bad for a team that was fighting relegation, right? And what makes this even more interesting is that he himself has said that he does want to play for the big three. But on top of that, he has requested to be sold by the club. And now there are talks that he's worth somewhere around Boma 10 million. Now the question is, would Kaiser Chiefs pay that much money for a player who's only had one season in the DSTV Premiership? Obviously, there could be that thing, Yoguti. Oh yeah, he could come to Kaiser Chiefs given that he, 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 he would want to play for the big three. But then the question is, would you really want to come to Kaiser Chiefs right now when everyone who goes to Kaiser Chiefs ends up looking average? I do not know. I guess if there are promises that, hey, we're getting a good coach, so come to Kaiser Chiefs, I think that he would come. So I am just waiting to see what, what the developments would be with regards to Ashley Cupido. But when I, what do you think before we talk about Sam Gilozan? Do you think that which who between the two strikers, who is a bigger risk? The one who has never played in South Africa at all, or the one who does not have much experience but has only scored seven goals in the top flight of South African football. Let me know down in the comment section below. Moving on, Mike Makab, the agent of Samge Lozwane, has said that they might, him and Samge Lozwane, be looking at potentially a loan move away from Kaiser Chiefs. Which is like, what? Because we know, usually, when these players leave Kaiser Chiefs on a loan, they never come back or sometimes they just fall off. So hopefully, if they do do that, they find a team that's going to play him, a team that's going to develop him, and then he can come back to Kaiser Chiefs and be useful. But I don't think that will happen because any other coach, any other coach, I mean literally any other coach, would come in and see Usam Gelozwane is quality, and I don't think they will allow Usam Gelozwane to leave because he would be such a useful addition or part of the club. So, what do you think? When Usam Gelozwane is 22, Fundo Villagas is like turning 18 soon, and he he he's currently performing for Kaiser Chiefs. Dusha Balala is also young, performing for Chiefs. Usam Gelo is the one who's older of the three of the three. So I don't think he him leaving because he's a young star because there are players younger than him. Who are performing and now if we can be added there even now we have a boy Hansen being promoted to the senior team or soon to be promoted to the senior team those combinations could get chiefs very far so i don't think that he should be leaving Kaiser chiefs because well he's a very good player speaking of good players and bad results well 
it's not connected at all but according to the dstv premiership look from january this year kaiser chiefs would be relegated if we're just judging from january 2024 until may 2024 kaiser chiefs would have been relegated they are bottom of the league can you believe it the whole case achieves in the whole 2024 would be bottom of the league and thus would be relegated which basically means if Kevin Johnson came in beginning of the season to coach case achieves we would have been relegated and I, 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 I believe that because you look at how Chiefs were playing and you're like yeah this is bad this is horrible we were the worst team in the DSTV Premiership the worst that is just said even abo swallows who have lost half their squad even abo arrows who lost 10 games in a row from last year until this year but we were even worse than them imagine that yo guys no kevin johnson kevin kaiser chiefs management i wash my hands because i didn't even make the match reaction on sunday because i traveled and then on sun on saturday i mean and then on sunday of course i i, I decide good now i don't make videos on sundays but i i, I was just thinking to myself when i to, i was talking to this other uh, uh, gentleman uguti i am so glad that this season is over i am also not so sad that we did not get top 8 you know why because if we had gotten top 8 and then maybe the squad askahlangani kahle the first team that we face because mtn8 sometimes is the first game of the season first game we play we get smacked by mamelo de sundowns and then our confidence is down and out before the season even starts so maybe just maybe this excuse me maybe this is just a, a blessing in disguise for kaiser chiefs to not participate in any cup beginning of the season because that will give the players enough time to gel enough time to 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 know each other and understand the style of the coach playing in the league because EMTN8 is literally like you get knocked out in your in the first game of the league already there is negativity around the team and if it doesn't win anything well is just playing in the league the focus is there the team is getting better and by the time the second cup the calling knockout cup comes around then it chips have gelled and we can hopefully win something there but when I, but you guys what do you think what do you think about kaiser chiefs not making top 8 is it a good thing or is it an embarrassment because at the end of the day it is an embarrassment because this is the biggest club in south africa yet they did not make top 8 let me know down in the comment section below thank you so much for watching and until next time remember ecos and pelo